Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Almost everybody <coughs> has the same kind of goals. Almost everybody has the same goals. And I never thought of it like that before, but if I sat down and talked to 100 of you, most of you would say that you have some of the same goals. I wanna have good health. I wanna have good relationships. If you're a Christian, you wanna be closer to God. Maybe you wanna make a difference in the world. Maybe you wanna be financially strong. You wanna be able to be generous. Some of the same goals. Ironically, just because you set a goal doesn't mean you're ever gonna do anything to get there. The thing that gets you to achieving your goals are good habits, good habits. And I don't know anybody who actually has set out to achieve negative goals, right? Do you? Like, I sit down at the end of each year in December and I write my goals for the next year, what I want to accomplish. But I never see somebody write I want to gain five pounds a year for the next 20 years to the point that I'm on diabetes medication when I'm 65. I've never seen somebody set that out as a goal. I've never seen anybody say, I want to eat McDonald's every week for the rest of my life so I get heart disease and die young. What a great goal. Like, I don't see that, right? Come on, I'm being facetious, but you know what I'm saying. I don't see people setting out negative goals. I can't visualize somebody saying that they want to become a raging addict to where they're nasty to their family because they have to feed their habit. I never saw somebody say, I want to be addicted to something. Even Listen, let's even talk about this. When we started out our caffeine journey, our, co our morning coffee journey, we never thought we were going to be addicted to it. We never thought that coffee was going to radically alter our morning if we didn't have it. Come on, somebody. I don't know anybody who says that they just want to work for years and years and years at a dead-end job, a dead-end job that they don't care about, that gives them no fulfillment, just to put food on the table. I don't know anybody who sets those goals out. They didn't set that as a goal. That may be your reality, but that wasn't your goal. I mean, when you had a goal as a little kid, you wanted to be a dancer or a ballerina or a firefighter or a policeman or a lawyer. You did not want to hate your job for the rest of your life. I want to live a passionless life. I want to get towards the end of my life and look back and say, I didn't really accomplish anything, but I have a ton of regrets. Nobody sets those goals, do they? No. I don't know anybody who wants to end up like that. But what's so crazy interesting to me is when you think about it, Nobody, almost nobody, we're going to get into some meat here, almost nobody ruined their life with just one bad decision. Almost no one. I mean, I'm sure there's a few people who did something really bad just one time and it ruined their life, but for the most part, you don't ruin your life by just one bad decision. Most people that have ruined their life do it by little, small decisions done over and over and over again over time. One bad step, one bad decision, one bad habit, one day at a time over a series of years, and then they end up in a really bad place. And then the rest of us summarize years of this person's bad decisions with like one sentence. We can summarize years of bad decisions in one sentence. Yep, he's always struggled with his weight and he died at 58. We summarized years of bad decisions, years of not planning meals. Come on somebody, the reason why most diets fail is because we didn't meal prep 
I'm gonna throw this one out. If you can eat your meal while driving your car, it's probably not a healthy meal. You know that to be true. You know that to be true. With your ice cream cone, right? But it's easy. We summarize someone's years, their lifelong bad decisions in one sentence. Yep, he was irresponsible at his job and they finally fired him. Years of showing up late. Years of not coming back from lunch on time. Summarized in one sentence, he was irresponsible, finally lost his job. It's rarely ever just one event or one action that ruins someone's life. And the Bible, I like the Bible for this and sometimes I don't like the Bible for this, but the Bible tells like the bad stories of people. Right? It tells like the failures of people. I don't know if it's to make us feel good about ourselves or to just show us stories of like me too. But there's this one story that summarizes like multiple bad decisions into one sentence and the Bible's full of these. The Bible's full of one sentences that summarizes tons of bad decisions. But here's one. In Judges 16 verse 1, it's probably the most profound Summary of bad decisions. And in Judges 16, it's the story of Samson. Do we know the story of Samson and? Delilah. Delilah. Samson and Delilah. Samson was probably the one guy in the Bible that was full of like the most potential. He had so much potential within him. He could have been and done anything. He had supernatural strength given to him by God. But he made some bad decisions. And it wasn't just one bad decision. It was a series of bad decisions. If you ever want to read it, go ahead and read the whole story in Judges 16. But I want to get to this one part here. Judges 16 verse 1, it summarizes, it says, one day, say one day. One day, so it's summarizing it as one day, but it wasn't just one day. One day, Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. All right, we're going to go here today. Is that all right? Can we go here today? One sentence summarizes the trajectory of a downward spiral for this guy's life. He was incredibly gifted, but made some bonehead decisions. One day, Samson went down to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. Is there any children in here? That's all right, Poppy. I'm not going to say nothing crazy, but. But we know he didn't just see her. He hired her. We get that? When the Bible says he went to see her, he hired her. There was a business transaction. Get it? You know what I'm saying? Okay. He went to Gaza for a bi- for on a business trip. <laughs> business transaction happened. Okay? Now, you likely don't know the geography like I did not know the geography. I had to put a little study into this. It took a little bit of work. He wasn't from Gaza. Okay? Gaza is 25 miles from Samson's hometown in Zora. 25 miles. Gaza, Samson happens to be public enemy number one. He is hated, he is hunted, he is detested. Public enemy number one. So, in order for him to go to Gaza, is to put his life at risk. Yes? If you're hunted there, to go there is, so we already know he got a pride problem. He got an arrogance issue, right? Because who can touch me? I'm the strongest man in the world. Be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful when you think your actions can't touch you. Said everybody who had a heart attack, one more cheeseburger won't kill me. Eat Baba. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It wasn't just 
One bad decision, it was a series of it, right? So to go to Gaza is to put his life at risk. And what we know about the time that Samson lived in, there was no Uber. <laughs> there was no taxi. There was no mass transit. So more than likely, he walked 25 miles for this business transaction. Who does that? Who does that? Who walks 25 miles out of their way for that? We do it all the time. I mean, maybe not for that. But we do it all the time for the thing that has become a habit to us. We will sit in line at the Starbucks drive through for an ungodly amount of time <laughs> to get the macchiato. It's an ungodly long time that you sit in that Starbucks drive through <laughs> right? I'm just throwing this out there. It's easy for us to sit back and say, well, shame on Samson, walking 25 miles for a booty call. You were thinking it. <laughs> he walked 25 miles into enemy territory to have a date with Delilah. Why would he do something like that? Why would he do something like that? It doesn't make any sense to us. You know, someone else's habit's not going to make sense to you. How, why would he walk 25 miles, but you will drive all the way to Jersey just to get Chick-fil-A? <laughs> and you better believe I'm getting something to go in the freezer. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's so easy to judge somebody who sins differently than you. So I'm not that smart. I had to look some stuff up. Not, no mass transit, no Uber, no taxi. He probably walked. How long is 25 miles? It's roughly 56,250 steps. It's roughly 56,250 steps. It wasn't just one step in the wrong direction, but he had 56,250 opportunities to turn around and go home. Each step, I could go home. I could go home. I could go home. <laughs> I should have gone home. I don't want to go home. Have you seen Delilah? But I should go home. Most of us don't wreck our lives one bad decision at a time. And it's normally little small steps, little bad habits that got us to a place where we're like, man, I wasted years of my life. And now, before we want to be judgmental about someone who sins differently than us, you may say, man, I live a great life, but you're so insecure that you've never taken a chance in your entire life. You've lived a safe life. And you're gonna look back and say, what did I accomplish? What did I do? Come on, I'm trying to help somebody today. That's why we're talking about our habits. Two weeks ago, we said this. Based upon who you want to become in life, What's one habit you need to start? And we talked about starting good and new habits. Based upon where I wanna go, what do I need to start doing? Today I wanna say, based upon who you want to become, what's one thing you need to stop? What's one habit you need to break? Come on, somebody, I know. I know it's gonna get quiet here today. What's one habit? habit that's unhealthy or unhelpful. Perhaps it's ungodly. 
and it's taking you ultimately in a direction that you do not want to go. And before you think that I'm standing up here because I have achieved oh, perfection, <laughs> the reason why I was reading books about habits is because I wasn't happy with the habits I was doing. I wasn't going towards the goal that I wanted to become, all right? What one habit, based upon who you want to become, do you need to break? And I'm gonna say something as, as simple as negative self-talk. Maybe you need to break the habit of negative self-talk. You're so stupid, dummy, Urgh. can't do that. I wish I could do that. Negative self, maybe you need to break that. I love what James wrote in James 1.21. James is the brother of Jesus. And, he's, and James says this, he says, get rid of all filthy habits. Get rid of them. Get rid of filthy habits. Well, Pastor Mike, I've conquered my flesh. I don't have any filthy habits, but you're a gossip. Come on. The Bible talks about persons who can't bridle their mouth. You just talk about everybody. Well, I'm not talking about them. We have a prayer chain. You know why we don't really have big prayer chains? Because they turn into gossip chains. Did you hear? Did you hear about what's happening in family church? E Baba, go pray. Go talk to Jesus about it. Come on, somebody. He says, get rid of all filthy habits and all wicked conduct. He's saying, break some habits. There's some stuff that's taking you down the wrong road. Let's break them. Let's break them. How much time are we wasting in our lives with bad habits? You know, we could be so much more productive during that time. He says, get rid of all filthy habits and all wickedness. He says, by submitting yourself to God and accepting the word that he plants in your heart, which is able to save you. He says, the word is able to save you. So he's saying, you can't do this on your own. You can't break these habits on your own. You've tried. You've tried breaking those habits on your own. You have to surrender them to God and allow him to do his work within you. What are we talking about today? Well, before we talk about how do I break a bad habit, let's talk about what. Before the how, let's talk about the what, ready? What is the one habit you need to break? Now, this is not a shout out. Like, this is not, no shame, no shame. Just, just keep it here, all right? What is one habit you need to break? See, because we need to identify it. We need to define it because you cannot defeat, woo, you cannot, put this up here. You cannot defeat what you cannot define. You cannot defeat what you will not define. You can't defeat it if you don't define it. See, that's, that, that's the power of having a name. Because if it has a name, then every name must bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about the 27 bad habits you need to break. I don't want 27. One. I don't, need, I don't even want five. One. What's one bad habit that you're going to break? What's your one? Maybe you have a habit of having a bad attitude. Maybe you have a habit of having a complaining heart. Maybe you're negative all the time. Come on, somebody. Maybe it's an eating issue. Maybe it's eating too much. Maybe it's not eating enough. Maybe it's binge eating and then vomiting it. Come on, this is real life stuff, guys. Maybe you eat too much sugar. Man, it's so easy to judge people who sin differently, but you got chocolate still in the corner of your mouth. <laughs> Maybe you snack too much. Maybe you have a technology addiction. Maybe you're addicted to video games, right? And it's kind of fun playing the video games, but then over time you realize that you're playing video games and it's hurting your other relationships because ah, we gotta beat this board. And just one more level, just one more hour. 
and your family's asking you to come hang out with them and you're in video game world. Maybe it's social media. Scroll, 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 double click, scroll, double click, scroll, double click, scroll, 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 double click. Hey, could you come hang out with me? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Maybe it's binge watching too much Netflix and the moment you come home from work, plop on the couch and the rest of the night, you're in Netflix world and it's just become a habit. A habit that's stealing your time and it's stealing your life. What's so wrong with relaxing? Nothing is wrong with relaxing. But when it has become the habit, oh man, I saw this funny TikTok yesterday. <laughs> this husband comes in like to, to where his wife is at and they're like newlyweds and he's like, honey, I thought you said that you were interesting. And she's laying there under the covers, still like kind of snoozing. And she's like, no, 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 you misheard. I'm into resting. <laughs> into resting, interesting. Oh, I was dying. I was dying. How true, right? We're going to conquer so much. We're going to accomplish so much. But then we're going to sleep life away. We're going to binge watch movies about someone else's messed up life. Come on, I'm just saying, we got to mind shift, thinking differently. Social media, Netflix, maybe your habit is pornography. Oh, I went there. I went there. Oh. You've tried to quit. You've tried to look away. You promised you wouldn't do it again. Won't go there again. But you find yourself back there. Again, maybe it's your mobile device. Maybe like you get anxiety and a panic attack if you don't have your cell phone with you. We're wasting time in our lives looking at screens that's not moving life forward. Maybe you have a habit of um, uh, a substance abuse. It could be sugar, it could be nicotine, it could be an illegal substance, maybe a prescription medication. I don't know. I don't know what the habit could be. I don't know the one thing holding you back from saying, man, if I conquered this one area of my life, I would feel so much more free. I'd be so much more happy. But let me point this one thing out. If more than one person tells you you have a problem with something, you probably have a problem with something. Can I say this with, to you with all love? If someone tells you you have a problem with something, you probably have a problem with it. And when you get angry and defensive because someone pointed it out, you definitely have a problem with it. You definitely have a problem with it. In my life, I've had habits that I wasn't happy with. I've had habits that were self-destructive. I'm the king of self-destruct. King of self-destruct. I could like be winning, 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 and then do something dumb to just mess it up. Habits. And I had to ask myself this question, so I want to ask it to you. Based upon who you want to become, what one habit do you need to break? Now, there's a difference between starting a new habit and breaking a bad habit. We said that it can be very hard to start a new habit because there's no immediate payoff. So you want to start jogging or riding your bike. You wake up and say, like, oh my God, it's five in the morning. I don't want to go jogging. You go jog one time. You don't see anything. No results from jogging one time. No results from exercising one time. No results from riding your bike one time. So it takes a long time for that new habit to have a payoff, to be worth it. It takes a long time to get that cycle going in your life. See, but a bad habit's the exact opposite. A bad habit has an immediate payoff. That's why you do it. You eat the donut, you get the sugar rush. Immediate. I immediately get the payoff from the bad habit. That's why they're so addictive. I can do this bad habit, I get the reward right now. 
It's fun to do the wrong thing at first because it's instant gratification. Sin can be fun at the beginning. How many of you would raise your hand and say, yes, sin is fun? Some of you just said, I ain't gonna raise my hand in sin. I ain't gonna say that in church. All right, so let me tell you this. If you're here today and you say sin is not fun, then either you're doing it wrong, <laughs> or you're a liar. Either way, you're sinning. <laughs> I know, I really struggled with whether I was gonna say that or not. But we had to go there, we have to be honest. The Bible tells us sin is fun for a time. It's fun, it's fun for a season. It's fun at the beginning. It can be fun. But later in life, it could lead you down a road of destruction. I mean, your, your picture is the customer of the year at the all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> the only reason why I talk about food so much is because the Apostle Paul did. The Apostle Paul preached so much about food, like almost everything he talked about, about judging each other and, and what's a sin and what's not, it was all about food, all right, anyway. You love that banana pudding with the vanilla wafers in it? Ooh, Eva, all you can eat. <laughs> now, I gotta tell you, I was raised in the generation where down on Dolson Avenue, we had a Ponderosa. The all-you-can-eat ice cream machine. That fake icy milk ice cream. It didn't matter because it had all the toppings that you could just pile on. I remember Sunday after church, Ponderosa. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. And it's fun until you catch diabetes. I render that powerless in the name of Jesus. I ain't got time for diabetes. Diabetes has got no place in this house in the name of Jesus. Well, then let's cut some chocolate cake out too. And let's go for a two-mile walk. Ebaba, somebody. Too much alcohol feels good until it don't. It feels good until the next morning. until it ruined your life, until you didn't plan how you were gonna get home so you just decided to drive yourself anyway. There's a perceived benefit for a little while, but then there's a negative payoff later. The opposite of a good habit, right? It takes a long time, but then a positive payoff. Bam, I'm rewarded immediately for this negative habit, but I'm gonna pay for it later in life. And that's the deception of the enemy, man. The deception of the enemy is the short-term fulfillment and gratification and long-term pain. If a good habit's difficult at first, what did we say we did? We have to make it easy. Two weeks ago, we said this. Two weeks ago, we said, if a good habit is hard to start, then we have to make it easy. Put your vitamins on the middle of the table that you're going to see every morning. And I know, you don't want to see the vitamin jar, ladies. I get that. But if we don't have it right in front of our face, we're dumb. We're not going to take them. We're not going to take them, right? Right there, where you can see it. Make it easy. So... If, it, if that's what we have to do, then on the other side, if we want to break a bad habit, then we have to make it difficult to do. If you want to break your sugar addiction, you got to get the sugar out your house. I'm on keto right now. Huh? I'm on keto right now. You know what keto is, right? Keto is high fat, high protein. Do you know what's not on keto? 
carbs. Carbs, right? I have to consume less than 50 carbs a day to stay in ketosis. But someone bought me these donuts this morning. <laughs> I'm seven and a half days into this, so I am in full-blown ketosis. I've already got keto flu the whole nine. Like, I'm good. I'm there. I'm burning it, baby. But, no, and I'm being for real. I'm being for real. I'm on, I'm on keto. Huh? But just a sniff. Because if I can just smell the sugar and the doughy goodness. You know, just a little sugar, I'm out of ketosis. Oh, it's so easy for you to tell me not to eat this. You haven't been on keto seven days. I don't even have any options in my house. I can't eat nothing, it's all gone. Right, but I won't eat a whole donut. No. Just, well, 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 we do, but just, look, go, 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 go. It's, but that, just, just a little, just a little, 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 if a little piece. See, but we do this, just a half a donut. I didn't eat the whole thing. Seven minutes later, other half, but I didn't eat the whole thing at once. Then an hour later, oh, I already ate one donut. What's the whole pack? <laughs> Am I lying? No. See, it ain't, it's funny, but it ain't funny because we do it. Because it's in my face. It's easy for me to get a hold of this. Now, let me just tell you, when it comes to dieting and food, I'm very, like, that ain't even temptation for me. No, I made a decision. I'm going after it. No problem. But... If it was chips and salsa, <laughs> some sour cream and onion chips, some salt and vinegar chips, ooh, that might be a situation, right? Let me tell you something. Here's the psychology. Every single person in this room, we only have so much willpower. We only have so much willpower. Fact, we only have so much energy. So you go jogging, you only have so much energy. If you don't refuel that while you're jogging, eventually you're gonna pass out. We only have so much, and we only have so much willpower. So when the willpower runs out, you're gonna fail, you're gonna fall. So let me remove the temptation so I don't even have to use willpower. Come on, somebody. You got him, all right. You have a habit of hitting snooze. So let's make hitting snooze difficult. Move your alarm clock to the other side of the room. Now you have to physically get up to hit snooze. Now if you go over there, get out of bed, hit snooze and go back to bed, you're just dumb. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can fight certain things off for a time, but when it's in your face, your willpower is going to run out. Come on, somebody. I want to read this to you in Proverbs 4.14. I'm just going to hold these. <laughs> Proverbs 14 says, do not... I mean, do not. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evildoer. Don't even go there. Samson, get off the road, man. Get off the road. Call a friend to help you out. You're heading towards destruction. Get an accountability partner. Get someone who's not impressed by you. Get someone who's not scared of you. Get a friend who's not afraid to lose you as a friend. You can call and say, I'm about to let stupid out the box. I'm about to let stupid out the box. Help me. 
Help me. Do you know the greatest danger in the world is when someone hears from God to check up on you and say, hey, how you doing? And you write, I'm good. And you're not. You just took one more step. And one more step. And 56,250 steps as a young man took his life. He didn't take it that day. He didn't take it the first night that he laid with her. It didn't take it the second night or the third night when she began to say, Samson, baby, if you love me, you'll tell me the secret to your strength. No, I ain't gonna tell you that. It's between me and God. Samson, let me take your strength. Let me take your purpose. Let me take your destiny. Let me take your calling. Let me take your future. And that's what the enemy's trying to do. One step at a time, because if he can get you to step the wrong way, all that potential that you're full of stays right there within you. Samson died full of potential, full of potential. As a blinded slave, his life was ended. Wasn't the first step, wasn't the second step, wasn't the third step, but eventually he was ended. You can genuinely love God, but find yourself in the wrong place of life. And I'm going to talk to people who are judgmental and think they're uber religious online right now. You can love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and still mess up. And if you can stand there in judgment about somebody, you're, already, you're in the place. You're in that place of messing up. You can love God so much and still be tempted. Don't think you can. You could read your Bible and pray every day and still mess up. You could find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, we would all hope that we would have our ear inclined enough to the Holy Spirit that we hear, get out of there, and we do it. But just because I hear the voice of God didn't mean I obeyed it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We're trying to, we're trying to actually make it through this life and do better, right? We could read the story of King David who loved God. King David loved God. He worshiped him from a little boy, anointed to be king. Still slept with Bathsheba, had her husband murdered. Why? Wrong place, wrong time. He was supposed to be out at war, and he chose to stay home. He saw something he wasn't supposed to see. Then he ended up doing something he wasn't supposed to do. Even so... Even so, no, no, church ain't gonna like this. Church what a large ain't gonna like this. Even so, do you know who King Solomon's mama is? Bathsheba. The bloodline of Jesus Christ. Even so, biggest mistake. Biggest mistake. First child ends up dying, grieves him, breaks him apart. Even so. God is faithful to redeem the time. He can redeem the time. He can redeem your time. Okay, you've had some bad habits. You've had some bad mistakes. Boo-hoo, get up. Get up. Time is short. Life is short. Well, my kids are grown. I messed up raising my kids. My kids are grown. Then call them. Tell them you're sorry. Repent. Change your thinking. Invite them over for dinner. And don't be a jerk while they're there. It's not a matter of starting 10,000 new habits. It's a matter of breaking the one bad habit that's making you an idiot. Maybe it's not all the things you need to start. Well, to be nicer, I have to do this, I have to smile. No, you just have to stop being a jerk. When you feel anger coming up, when you're feeling, stop it. Stop it now, sin, S-I-N, stop it now. 
When you feel it there, stop it. Stomp it out. Change your thinking. Change the channel. When you feel anger coming up, say, no, I'm in control of anger. Anger is not in control of me. Just because I feel anger doesn't mean I need to speak anger. You are in control of that. Wrong place, wrong time. I want to give you one tool real quick. I'm five minutes over. I want to give this word HALT, H-A-L-T, HALT, H-A-L-T. When you feel vulnerable. When, when, when are you vulnerable to do something stupid? Ready? H, when you're hungry. I'm vulnerable to mess up when I'm hungry. No? Some of y'all in here are hangry right now. Right? You're vulnerable to mess up. The reason why most of us break diets is because we did not meal plan, and it's easier to go to a drive through than it is to stop and cook. We make bad decisions when we're hungry, right? We are vulnerable when we're angry. I'm telling you, this is when we need to halt. Am I feeling angry? So am I going to express anger, or am I going to go for a walk and cool off? Anger. L stands for lonely. When you're lonely or bored, guess what? You easily return to a bad habit. Come on, somebody. That's when you go open the liquor cabinet one too many times. When you're lonely, when you're bored. And when you find nothing going on, you feel under challenge in life, you feel lonely, you're vulnerable, you mess up. And the last one is this, when you're tired. When you're tired, sometimes you'll make some stupid decisions. So halt. Halt, stop. Don't do that. Maybe you're in that place in that time right now where you're realizing the habits of your life are taking you down a bad road. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, because maybe this will help you. If you walk with the wise, you'll become wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Maybe you need to get some friends that have some of the same goals. They say that you are the sum of your five best friends. You are the sum of your five best friends. So you have five best friends, you're probably the average of their income, the average of their body weight, exercise, who are you hanging out with? Are you hanging around with wise people or are you hanging around with fools? You, you hanging out with people who are going somewhere and, and challenging you, or are you hanging around with people that are going nowhere? It's also in the Proverbs it says this bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Pastor Mike, why are we talking about all this in church? Like, can we not like just talk about Jesus in heaven? We are. We are. We're talking about the Great Commission. We're talking about the responsibility we were given as believers to be good stewards of this life. Good stewards of this life. We want better marriages. We want better relationships. So let's, let, let's, let's make the steps that we take lead to life and happiness, not 56,250 steps in the wrong direction that leads to demise. Father, we thank you today that your word will not return to you void, that these donuts will not creep into my mouth. But we pray, God, that we have the strength to bring honor to you in our mortal bodies. You said to present our bodies to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable act of service. So God, show us the things that we've done in the flesh that we can stop now, that we're not pleasing to you. Help us to find the new habits that bring honor and glory to your name. Maybe you're here today and you realize that you don't have the strength to do either one because you don't have the power of God living inside you yet. Because we said that it is only through the power of God that we can get rid of filthy habits, right? says that he will come alongside and help us and empower us to get through that time in life. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we want to offer that to you here today. And here at Family Church, we make it very simple. We just pray a prayer with you. It's called the salvation prayer. If you're online, you can pray this with us as well. And the prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. 
Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you reach out to somebody in one of our chat groups? Type AMEN in all capital letters, and one of our online hosts would love to connect with you and get you started in a daily devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, hey, I prayed that today for the first time. Anybody at all, real quick as I scan the room? Over here, yeah! Anybody else? Awesome, woo! Welcome home to the body of Christ. Uh, as well, we have a book at, available at the Welcome Center just outside these doors called Starting Point. It's a six-day devotional about getting started in your walk with Jesus Christ. We also have another book called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity and what we believe. And maybe you're on the fence today and you're like, I don't know if I can accept this yet, but I'd like more information. That's a great book for you. They're right at the Welcome Center. Help yourself to them. Father, we thank you that your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. I thank you for power, boldness, bravery, to tackle the things that are slowing us down and advancing the kingdom of God. Help us to honor you with our life. As we leave here today, Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice. They're the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, I love ya. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.